thank you everybody for coming on this a lovely day, gorgeous day. Uh, the first thing we need to do is have a motion to allow Meredith to participate remotely. Someone would like to read the usual boilerplate. Oh, shoot. I see somebody else has some don't wish. <laughs> I move that Meredith call requests to request to attend today's meeting of the JMRL board remotely due to a personal matter, specifically a work obligation be applicable. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And we, Martha is not joining us today. So, first thing we need to do is talk about the minutes of our March meeting. Corrections. Uh, there was one small typo correction that was made. Uh, council was spelled uh, like city council and it was changed to council like the legal sense. So. No. Not that motion to accept the minutes as written. I still move. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. All right. Announcements. I have one announcement to make. Uh, I'm very pleased to announce that uh, Yulita Ellis, who is with us today, has been promoted to be the branch manager of the Nelson Memorial Library. Um, Yulita has been working at Nelson Memorial since 2017 as a branch specialist. She earned her master's in library science from Old Dominion in 2022 while working at JMRL. Yulita is a fixture in the community, and Nelson Memorial's patrons and staff are pleased to welcome her to this new leadership role. Uh, Yulita will be offering a tour of the building, of the facility after your meeting today. So uh, please extend congratulations to Yulita. Yeah. Would you like to say anything? Um, well, I'm looking forward to the challenge. <laughs> um, of course, y'all probably met Susan on quite a few occasions. Uh, she and I worked together at the elementary school for 17 years before my coming here. So we were together for 20 something years and I learned a great deal from her and I, Plan to cut, try to continue to carry on the good leadership that she offered to the branch. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You need to also provide a good reason. when you won't. Any other announcements? If not, we'll take public comments. Anybody online, David? If anybody online would like to make public comment, please use the Zoom raise hand function now. Doesn't look like there's any online comments there. Mm -hmm. Is it her that has her hand raised? Or is that the. That's just that's mute. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's this hand. Yeah, okay. sorry. <laughs> Long hand. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, Trustee continuing education is next on the agenda, but we don't have any. <laughs> we have no continuing education offer today. I think uh, you and I discussed asking the board if they had any specific areas of JMRL service that they would like to know more about. Certainly, um, you can always ask me, but now's an appropriate time to. Uh, if you would like to hear more about something, we'll have staff prepare it. Last month's friend CE came from such a request, and we know uh, the policy committee just talked about making sure that we get a material selection CE on the books before August, so probably in July. So that means we're looking for two months of content area there. I can always come up with something, but if you have questions or things you'd like to know more about, please let me know. Happy to take those now, or you can email David or I sometime um, to let us know. I mean, things are, you know, some of the things we've looked at in the past, uh, we've looked at broad issues, we've looked at friends, obviously, we had, presentation on um, the extra things that JMRL distributes, loans, um, that kind of thing. Um, so any, anything you can you can think of that you'd like a little bit more in-depth on, just let us know and we'll get a presentation scheduled. And we talked about the bookmobile. Yeah, sometime between now and the end of the calendar year, we'd also like to get um, Marion Ruiz Villeman up to talk about bookmobile services. 
David, as I've mentioned to you before, I'm interested at some point in the board having a conversation around library fines. And uh, I think it could be really interesting to have if there's another library somewhere in the region who, you know, that has had the experience of getting rid of library fines and could talk to us about, you know, what was all involved in that. Well, that could be an interesting way to get into that conversation. Sure. I know, you know, most of our peers in the state are fine free. So I will say that the um, the board should expect to hear a report uh, as part of the five year plan for this year to come up with uh, a revenue impact that right. our business managers working on. So between now and the end of this fiscal year, there will be a report. It's not necessarily a CE, but here's, here's what will happen to it. As best as we can tell. Not, not exactly what you're talking about, yeah. but I know. All right, great. Great idea for the thinking. All right, which I think moves us into committee appointments and reports. First up, policy committee. Policy committee met today and we had a brief update on the safe child policy, which this board discussed at the last meeting. Uh, I won't recap that because David's going to sort of represent that to the board uh, as an agenda item. Uh, a little bit later as we sort of revisit the uh, the safe child policy. Then we spent most of our time on community partnerships, which is 4.53, and we do have a draft of that to present to the board today um, that we'll get on the screen. And I think that's a, yeah, that's also an agenda item. Uh, I guess the next two things are those. Are those. So, um, but that's what we, kind of covered or accomplished today, and we talked a little bit, as you heard from uh, some of the conversation about, about the CEs, about the, we just reviewed our calendar of regularly scheduled tenure review and sort of penciled in some time, some some uh, uh, meeting, identified which meetings we're going to kind of pencil in for the re remainder of the, of the year uh, to get those covered. That's the report. If there's any questions. Any questions? We'll bring up Meredith to talk about the five year plan committee report. Hi, thanks. Sorry to miss the cookies. Um, so, uh, our committee met last week, and um, in that meeting, we reviewed um, a final draft of the five year plan, um, and we did some wordsmithing. Um, and sort of talked about the graphics on the flyer that you have um, in front of you. Um, we also uh, began to look at sort of the parallel staff objectives that are not on the this uh, this flyer. And the committee um, is going to be cleaning those up some more. And we're going to talk about the five-year plan under uh, new business, I believe. So, but that's generally the update. Did you have anything else, David? Nope, I think that about sums it up. Any comments or questions? All right. So, uh, last month's meeting, we had a uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I ate your cookie for you. You're good. So. Thanks. Taking one for the team. <laughs> uh, we had a discussion uh, at last month's meeting when we were in green. Um, talking about JMRL's mission statement. And we wanted to um, review that. Of course, that's part of the, came up as part of the, the five-year plan. And whether or not we wanted to have a periodic review of the mission statement, would that be valuable? Um, I believe it was where we were was talking about that last time. I think it was mostly in the context of the board self-evaluation. That's true. Um, it was the fact that uh, that, your board self-evaluation that the board uses is mostly taken straight from what the state library is recommending in their handbook for trustees. And the question came up, are, is the state library recommending that that JMRL review their mission and values every year? So I was tasked with reaching out to the state to see what they said. And basically, um, uh, the state says that um, the board should see it annually and certainly review it during strategic planning. Um, but not necessarily to review it every year for do we need to change this, does this need to be updated, it just needs to be before them so that everybody sees it and is aware of what the board's mission and values are, which are the organization's mission and values, and then only if there's an issue would it be reopened. 
So I think what, what I was going to propose, Tony, is that uh, soon the board will be looking at a revised schedule for next fiscal year, mm -hmm. uh, which will include where are we going, uh, when when are you going to be able to branches, when is the budget discussion going to happen. And in the past, we have had April, the April meeting, sorry, as the library board reviews five-year plan, annually the board would look at it and get an update from the committee. So I was going to propose that we would add some language there to say and also look at the mission if you were to that at least once a year we would pop it up on the screen and take a look you need a motion for that or we just no that's uh, you know you'll you can you can have a motion when the schedule is in front of you to, to adopt it or change it. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, next up was a potential second reading of policy 4.234, the safe child policy in your handouts. So we did this have kind of a first reading last month with a kind of a substantial discussion. And, a, and one of the things that the discussion centered on was sort of the, some definition of the highlighted phrase there that's on your screen is who's a child and uh, do, does this need to be more precise? So Dave, we did talk to uh, library council and Dave's gonna yeah. recap that. For council C-O-U-M. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the legal council suggests that we handle this largely procedurally, but if the policy is going to have language that it should err on the side of 18, if we're going to mention it at all. Uh, lawyers um, argument was that it's a balance of freedom of access and safety. So the current policy, the one that is in existence uh, up until the time the board changes, it states the library cannot be held responsible for children not picked up by library closing time. So it is almost diametrically opposed to what we're suggesting here. Um, but staff at each location have local procedures for how they deal with these situations uh, when they do have children that are left there. So an option is to leave it as the current one says, which is that the library can't be held responsible and then procedurally have some information about, well, actually, if there's a child, you know, depending on the location, depending on the age, that is left obviously without a parent, here are the steps that you should take, which I think staff would probably appreciate rather than a blanket line there because the situation varies greatly. I heard about this quite a bit from the Louisa staff, uh, especially on Friday afternoons during football season for the high school, which is right next to the library. When school gets out in the afternoon, there tend to be children that are under 18 hanging around on the grounds and you know the staff always make sure everybody's safe before they leave the building, but there will be kids there. And so are we asking staff to stay and potentially call the authorities, as this policy says, uh, or call their parents, or are we letting them use some justice, some some uh, judgment about this? So, so bottom line is the lawyer says that if we were gonna leave the language that's proposed here, that it should probably say 18. Um, but if we were to remove that, we could handle it procedurally and, and have some language for our procedures about using judgment about safe situations. I, I'm confused. Here. I mean, that highlighted sentence to yes. say the library will make every effort to locate a parent or guardian of a child 18 or under who is not picked up. That's if, if we're going to leave language in there saying that the uh, staff is by policy going to stay, then the suggestion is it should be 18 because anybody under that is a child. And the alternative is to take that whole thing. Just out. to take it out and have it more closely, either don't mention it at all or have it something that mirrors what we have in the current policy. I think the policy committee's intention was to reflect some of the reality that was happening at branches where we do have staff that are staying uh, and also to make it sound friendlier, the, the language as it was, was the library cannot be held responsible for children not picked up by library closing time is not the friendliest statement to make. It kind of sounds like we don't care if you're, you're kids. <laughs> yeah, it was, and also to just give the public an idea of what to expect. Uh, if we actually are going to do this procedurally, it might be help, you know, helpful for people to understand that. But, uh, on the other hand, you don't want it to be a transactional thing where, oh, you said you're going to stay, so now I can now I have a 
a backstop here. Um, so I, so I, my, I didn't understand this from your earlier read. I've heard this recap twice, but I, this time I understood it better. Uh, I don't think I would be in favor of putting into the policy we're going to have staff stay every time that there's someone under age 18. So um, to me, if that's if that's the legal requirement, I would not be in favor of it. I don't think, I, I don't imagine that would be something you're real interested in operationally uh, no. being required to do. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what happens? Okay, uh, it says that... Uh, um, if the care, caregiver cannot be located or contacted within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so suppose, okay, within that 30 minutes, mm -hmm. yes, I, I, I'm on my way, but it takes another 45 minutes. Uh, For them to get there? To get there. Yeah, I, you know, it says here that we're going to call the, uh, the appropriate authorities if they're not 30 minutes there. So I think if staff talk to a parent or guardian or some responsible adult that's coming mm -hmm. to get them, they're going to use their best judgment. They're going to give them some grace. Mm -hmm. If it's 10 minutes, okay. If it's 20 minutes, all right. If it's 30 minutes, you know, they probably would try to contact them again to figure out where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, I also don't want to necessarily put it in here saying that they're going to call the police at that point. Like if a parent is on the way, yeah. you know, staff won't be happy about it and they will probably let the parent know that, hey, here's what time to close and here's, if you can't follow these rules, you know, these consequences might happen, but. Um, that's a long-winded way of saying it would kind of depend on the situation, but I believe that staff would attempt to contact them again, and only if they felt like they weren't coming yeah. would they call the sheriff's office or let them stay. This child's been left here for an hour. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see the, the idea there that you're going to you know, get in touch with them and, and then give them a little leeway. To, right. Um, Ten minutes, fifteen minutes, you know, whatever. It also kind of depends on if that happens at the end of the day. You know, if you're asking staff to stay beyond what their scheduled time is, they might have other obligations. They have their own kids to go pick up. Right. You know, it's a situation where they need to leave, then they probably would call the sheriff's mm -hmm. office and say, "Hey, I need to leave, and I can't leave this child here." I think if you rem if you just remove the red part, then the statement. You know, staff's authorized to contact appropriate authorities if the situation appears to be dangerous or neglectful to a child. It, it's kind of saying like we're we're gonna we're gonna kind of keep an eye out and yeah. do our best, but but it's not forcing any rigid protocol. That's a good point. Well, I think I'd be in favor of taking it to the right Check with our lawyer. <laughs> I think it's should stay. That's what staff did. I mean, yeah. that's what staff, right? That's yeah. I mean, I think it could be in procedure. If it was clearly outlined in procedure, as long as there's guidance, I don't think it has to be in the policy. Right. I think that would also work for staff for it to be in the procedure. But Kathy has a. But no, I agree with you. I just think that it should stay. If you feel that it should go in policy, that's good. But I think parents should be aware because then they can't say, I thought you said, mm -hmm. yeah. So I go along with it going in policy. I mean, it's a procedure. Which, and just to be clear, Kathy, that means we're removing it here from the policy level. It's in the, it's just something that staff is doing in, in procedure. I was just supporting her. Yeah. I, I really feel that it should stay here, but staff is important because they are doing this day to day. Right. So I can understand, you know, where you come from. But I don't think that it should be erased completely. Right. Okay. I agree. So yeah, it's just we're just describe we're just it's what do we put in the kind of the front page, so to speak, of the policy. And if we leave the red, the lawyers tell us we have to say 18, uh, which makes a big uh, you know, promise on behalf. I guess where we are is a, a motion to accept the policy as revised, removing the, the section seen here on the screen. In place, uh, but making that a procedure rather than a policy. Anybody want to make that motion? 
I'll, I'll make that motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? I always forget that one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. So I guess we're moving on to new business. Uh, the first reading of policy 4.53 partnerships. Uh, I was tasked with printing this between the meetings and I it entirely slipped my mind. I apologize. Uh, so instead, you'll have to read off the screen. Uh, while David's prepping that, I'll, I'll just outline the kind of the big big picture, some of the motivation, or some of the issues that we that we talked through as a as a committee. Uh, the, the context is that we use this word with the staff, or we as a library uh, use this word partnership all the time in terms of programs, uh, announcements, messaging. Um, you know, we might partner with the, what's, what's the example I use, the Red Cross yeah. to do a health, a blood pressure screening and just the word partner shows up there. So there was, so, so as we discussed that, we'd had a uh, generally a, uh, a desire to kind of describe what that meant when people would see that we partnered with someone um, uh, who is partnering? Who gets to partner? What's what's the what's the meaning of that? How do I become a partner, or how do I partner with the library if I if I want to? If I see this other organization doing it, how do how do I get it to do that too? So just sort of uh, a, a awareness and definition about what what does that mean? So I, I guess probably we should start if you have it with the, with the current version, which was just this. Uh, highlighted uh, black phrase, which is black text, which says, um, it's, very, it's very general. Uh, and then we sort of flesh that out with the blue, the blue text. You might strike just for, yeah, strike version two, since that's not the one where you've ended up. And so we ended up with this so-called version three, uh, where we have a little bit of an intro, uh, what's the point? Of partnering and it's in a the, the bottom line is it's we want to work with other organizations when we can advance our mission and values that's the purpose um we do have a number of defined uh types of collaborations already so program partnership is discussed in the program policy and there's a form if you want to partner or, or propose a part or a way to um, work with the library to present a program Here's how you do it. So now we've got that kind of referenced here. Same thing, displays or bulletin boards or, or art. Um, we took, oh, we put art, yeah, art is in there. Those are all ways you can interact with the library and sort of uh, engage and involve, you can just be a, a volunteer in general. Um, so those are things that we're already doing and already have definitions for. And then if you scroll down, uh, there's a catch-all if you want to partner with us in some other way, like the blood pressure um, day, I don't think would be covered by any of those predefined bullets. Contact the director, and then there's a little bit of guidance of why the director would choose or choose not to uh, go forward. And again, it's guided by mission and values. Uh, and then there's sort of a catch-all that the, the the director couldn't get the uh, Board of Trustees involved if it was something at a at a larger scope or just a, in, in his judgment if he wanted to uh, get uh, board input. And then the last is just sort of a general disclaimer. When we use this word partnership, it's not a legal uh, relationship, and it doesn't mean that we're endorsing uh, every aspect of some organization that we're that we're partnering with. We're just working with them on some specific uh, activity for sort of mutual benefits. And that's the walkthrough. Questions, comments? Is is the volunteering like organization sponsored volunteering? I was just kind of surprised to see that as a partnership and I was just Yeah, it's 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 um generally individuals, maybe they 
it can be groups, you know, participate in say the you know the way day of caring, uh, where they would send an organization there. Or the example I used is the who comes and cleans the books, the uh, the Kiwanis Club. Uh, so it could be an organization, be organization. that wanted to, you know uh, do some service project at the library usually in order to fulfill their own uh, kind of giving goals. Generally, the goal was to cover every base where we've already got. A, a you know a process in place and direct people over to that uh, if they had yeah so we try to be more expansive than than narrow in terms of just this the the the, the uh, awareness aspects of these bullet points and yeah. So maybe this is fine, but it, because I was in the the mindset of partnering, and then I saw volunteering, it just kind of re, like I was like, does that mean that the live people from the library are going to volunteer at this partner organization, or people from the partner organization are going to volunteer at the library? And it it well, it might just I mean, something along the lines of volunteering at the library as described. Yeah, so maybe just volunteering at the library. Yeah. But it's interesting because we had a, a long side discussion and Peter tell me if this dovetails into this thought, you know, we go to a school might request us to might request a library to come to an e a school event and have a table. Uh, and at that's at that point, we're sort of volunteering We're you know, we're partnering with them to it, it benefits us because we're able to do outreach at their event. But a lot of times those requests are, are initiated by the schools who's who's telling us about a specific use. To Peter's point, though, that link is just going to tell people how they volunteer, yeah, yeah. Library, not, not how to ask the library to come to them. So, so I think right now in this specific example, you would be following into the catch-all where the where the school would just be contacting you yeah. separately. Well, they, they would actually use that the group, kind of group visits. visits form, which we also had a long discussion about a separate school policy. That the policy committee is going to look at. Is, is that a partnership, and should that be, end up as a bullet point that we get at for next next month? We're we're just trying to write, strike the right balance between finding all the, the little use cases and but covering where yeah. we've already got something. On the program partnerships, when you what the um, the school like if if you have a a, a program like. Uh, you're signing up for library cards or something like that, and uh, and you're going to their back to school day or something like that. Uh, would would that be under the programs or what? Generally, no. The program partnership is intended to be somebody wants to come here to this room and do some event. So if the school okay. wanted to do, uh, we're having a science fair and we want to partner and have it here. Maybe it would come through that way. Uh, if it's a school visit. We generally have different ways to go. Like they'll contact the it depends. Like here, they would talk to the staff probably and just mm -hmm. arrange that. Um, but there are also forms online. They can say, "Hey, we want to make a group visit. We want our kids to get library cards." But I'm saying if, if they were if they were at the at the school, yeah, and and, uh, and wanting uh, library cards and. Yeah, we, I think in in our in the library staff's parlance, we would call that an outreach activity. And we have kind of a separate mechanism okay. for that. Well, we're taking our library services out of the building. Can you scroll up so I can see what the headline was again? Library community partnerships is the title of the current policy. Is that right? We didn't change that, did we? Yeah, library community partnerships. Hmm. What are you thinking through? I'm just looking at the wording of between could you could we look at changing com community partnerships at the library to make this more understood in general as what's being done versus the outreach I'm just trying to think through what the consequences of that would be is it going to prevent something from happening no because your your displays will be in the library. Displays will definitely be in the library. Mm -hmm. The voluntary at the library because we already said that. Because they're saying things here like in the meeting rooms being done. It's. Uh, 
I'm thinking of this outreach as a broad, as part of this umbrella that it's, we've, to me, the, the, the scope here was when we're working with an outside work yeah. in any capacity. So then we need more, we need another bullet to include the outreach, the outreach aspect. Mm -hmm. This, I think, needs a little more work personally, whether it's changing the headline and having the two separate pieces or make an umbrella that follows both in the library and as well as outside the library when the library goes elsewhere. Um, I think that's a good point about adding a fifth bullet there that would just address outreach in general, you mm -hmm. know, like if if you are interested in the library coming to you to do things, even though we do have a separate pot, we have separate policies that guide all these, you know, <laughs> so the goal here was to try to give people a place if they went to our site, typed in partner, they would get this and it would help send them to where they needed to go. So I'm happy to draft some language there. Um, and send it around to the policy committee to do. I don't think we need to wait till another meeting to do this probably okay. offline. And it would be something to address outreach requests just to tell people mm -hmm. if you're interested in the library coming to your event, which is you can look at, they might think of as partner, even if that's not exactly how it's defined here. And the other aspect of that is the second sentence in the intro. These collaborations could take the form of, and does it need to be? To me, this is already was already broad enough to cover that because this, this doesn't limit it. The sentence doesn't limit it to at, at a library facility. It could just be working together. So, but I want to get your feedback if you think that distinction of coming in or going out would need to be covered here. You know, could be described here, or is this general enough as it is? I think I like Brandy's point that if we're going to go to the trouble to tell people, like, here are the things that here yeah, are the yeah. places to go, yeah. that if that's another way that people might think of here, right. then we might as well point them okay. mm -hmm. yeah, that way. So does that cover it right, rather than sort of a conceptual reorient? Yeah. I think we'll have the okay. you're giving the policy committee email. Yeah, and then we'll just put it up for a second reading yeah, and, and you all can discuss right. again. I guess on the last that paragraph I would take out. I would leave it at um, nor does it establish a legal partnership or joint venture and take out the or contractual relationship between the entities because you may very well enter into a contractual agreement with right. one of these groups. We described that and you like want to an MOU of some sort might happen. Yeah and you want to be able to the library will want to enforce it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Well, it is. I don't know if I'm masquerading this, but this should just be four. Um, and, yeah. Would you keep and between the entities or just cut, cut that also for conciseness? You could take that out. Where's that? Between the left, like between the entities, you can cross that off. Yeah, we'll clean it up and re present next month. Thank you. All right. Discussion of five year plan. All right. Ever have a handout? Practically gratitude for so this is the five year plan. This is not, not just a summary of the five year plan. Yes. Oh, just, yes. It's, so, it's um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, there it is. Um, okay. So, um, just some reminders. Also, I know some of you joined us mid year. To, on the board, but um, this is really the culmination of a year-long process that we went through. We involved many staff members um, from a variety of branches, um, the president of Friends of the Library, and there were three board members that um, attended most of the meetings, uh, Lita, Tony, and myself. Um, and I wanted to say first thanks to everybody um, who was involved for all their hard work um, and their efforts to make sure that the plan reflected 
you know, staff and the community and, um, you know, the view of the board. So we, um, just to go back also at the very beginning, we did surveys um, and got staff and community input. Um, and we also did a lot of research on peer libraries um, in Virginia to look at their five-year plan. Um, and I can't even remember how many David pulled. It was, it was a huge amount. Um, we also changed the format from the previous plans um, that were, they were quite long and full and full of lots of detail that was really much more staff objectives than it was for the board. And this is um, the guidance. We are following the guidance of the state library, um, which is to make it a shorter summary document that's much easily understood and read, you know, by community members, um, and which sets, you know, broad board level goals and strategies, and just explains those to the public as opposed to getting down into the nitty gritty. Um, we also shifted from the categories JML had used in the past to try to align with our values. And so that's why you see these four buckets. Um, and currently staff are working on an accompany um, doc, which is gonna uh, put all those measurable objectives that the board looks at you know, each year to say like, did we achieve what we set out to do? But um, today is about introducing you to the document um, getting your, giving you a chance to read and review it, getting your feedback. And then I believe we have an agenda item to discuss it fully in May and then vote on it in June. So we wanted to give you a, enough time to read it and get feedback to uh, David and myself. Did I miss anything, David? No, I think as usual, you got all the high marks. <laughs> Tony, is that okay to add a May agenda item for a discussion? On me, we agree with that. And hopefully vote on all this work in June. Can you remind me, when would we see the staff? Uh, the staff one, I ideally, we would see by June as well. It is a it is a bigger task at this point. Um, and I would think, Mike, that there we would be interested in a board endorsement, similar right. to what we've done with the uh, handout with the um Employee uh, handbook. The employee handbook, thank you. Uh, so ideally, we would get those two things lined up together. Um, yeah, the, the approach sounds good to me. I kind of ideally would see them both to yeah. be able to cross-reference. Did something get missed in one or the other? Or, you know. Well, the 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 employee and is going to be a living document too. Right. So even if it came a month later, if it needed to be updated or changed, we could just do that without a full board vote. Right. Um, I think what I would be interested in hearing now is, or not maybe today, but you know, between now and May and June, one, this document and, and does this meet the board's needs here? And then two, if there's something that would align with those strategies and goals that are here that the staff would need to do that you want to make sure is called out in a uh, in a, a parallel plan that that comes to my attention so we can get it in there. Like, oh yeah, we need to make sure, right. you know, whatever the, the specific thing is that that's included. Yeah, I think I would ask at least behind the scenes for a draft. You know, sure, yeah, we can share a draft right now. It is, it is rough. Well, okay. I, 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 it, I know it's long and yeah. because it's what I've, I've been, it's similar, I imagine, to what we've published in the past. Yeah. And I know, and I am thinking also that it is it is a public document, although it's not going to be something we're publishing up front. Yeah. Somebody who wanted to get it would be available into, into those, it's available to them, like all of our working materials, essentially. Um, but I think. I would need to look at the draft to answer the questions that you just that you just raised. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, so the the staff um, document that Mike's talking about, mm -hmm. like uh, under the first column where it mm -hmm. says strategies identify underserved population, it would like it would spell out how it's going to identify underserved population. Yes, uh, I, I, let me bring it up. It is rough. It is mostly staff. Uh, oops, sorry, that's not. Good. 
there's going to be a series of measurable objectives and each one will have a timeline and outcome and the responsible party for it. Uh, that parallels. That parallels the, the anything that, so it follows here. At the top is the value, and then here's the board's, um, the red is the, the board's goal, and then the black is the strategy, and then there would be how is the staff going to, what is the staff going to do in order to, to, get, to make sure that the board is meeting their, their strategies and their goals there. And the timeline would be within the next five years. Yes, but this one will have more flexibility than the overall board. The board can always change that strategic plan. But you know things change. Like in the middle of our last five-year plan, there was a, a global pandemic, right? Which kind of, kind of, uh, it created new opportunities, and it also sunk some things. So um, yes, in here, you know, this is what I mean by by raw. So your question is identifying those places. Oh, we're going to do data GIS work. So that needs to be fleshed out uh, to to make sure that we know specifically what we're asking for. Just while you're on that topic of timeline outcome and responsible party, I, I do think this is a great direction to be moving towards. I don't I don't feel that we've within the framework of our strategic plan done a lot of regular review of uh, at least a structured review. Maybe maybe you'd agree. Um, certainly, at a, where I've seen at a board level, where I say, well, we say we're going to do this on such and such a year or month and and here's where we are with that um so i might i wonder meredith is it the intent that the five-year plan five-year committee yeah who what would be maybe we could talk a little, a little bit about the intent of when those reviews happen uh who's doing them is that a, is that a staff level um is that you know is that process flushed out a little bit yet or is it just sort of a uh an aspiration at this point and and what's the role of the board a strategic planning committee in, in any of those measurable reviews. So what we have had in the past, I don't know if you all can even see this, is every April library board reviews five-year plan. So some years that has come from the group getting, the smaller group getting back together, kind of reviewing things, then preparing a report to give to the board to say, here's what happened, here's what didn't happen, here's what needs to change, here's what's working, here's what's not. Or if it would just be the full board having that conversation with staff. Um, we have not gotten to the to that point okay. yet. The the goal for this group has been focused on. Yeah, group. I'm thinking ahead a little yeah. bit, I guess. Which is good. I mean, yeah. that's 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 uh, the point of a strategic plan. I would love to. Just the feedback from Meredith. It would I would love to down the road uh, get that what that process is going to be fleshed out a little bit. But I, but I think it's a great direction to be. Uh, one thing also, that I can do too, I'm sorry, go ahead, Meredith. Oh, no, I just also wanted to call out, I thought um, the committee did a really nice job. If you scroll down, talking about like sort of what did we accomplish in the past five years, and mm -hmm. then also creating on the back some real call outs about who are we, what do we do, and, um, you know, and in this case, they focused on literacy programs. Um, but I, I think it was a nice sort of overview of of sort of because I think it's it's a great handout for people who really want sort of the big picture of what our library what JMRL is sorry I cut you off David oh no I was just going to mention that um, it might also be useful for me to share with the board the state's guidelines um, which are, are quite different from what we've seen in the past about what they think strategic plans should look like so you'll get an idea of where a lot of these discussions over the past year for the committee have been focused and happily a lot of other libraries came up i guess to for renewal before us so we were able to <laughs> to beg borrow and steal uh some of their ideas i think this is great overall and this is a very great uh piece of material for summer at a summary level what are we about what are you know we we've, we've got initiatives in all these areas that we're that we're uh pursuing to um you know to to to, to meet the services that we that we're identifying i i do like the i didn't notice it because i was just looking at it for the first time meredith but i like this the previous outcomes for sure uh so i'm glad you kind of highlighted that um 
Yeah, I think it's great. It's just a question in my mind that I have to think about because it's a. For, this is very different from the past, past cycles, and I think mm -hmm. it's. And I think I'm positive, but I'm. Uh, I hadn't but, realized. You know. how, it, I heard some. You sort of describe, you know, what the direction was, but I hadn't seen how different it was. So, so the what the thing I'm thinking through is just how much of these details do the public need to have access to, and at what in what format, and, and at what level. Yeah. And. Um, Probably, I think where you're going is probably the right answer. And I think where you're probably going is, well, we've got the stack document and, and the request. We'll be happy to show it to you. But So in the past, it was all one big document. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I mean, you why, all, why does that change? Um, because of the guidance from the state saying, here's how you should do this. So, and why did they change that? I'll share that document with you. Uh, it's just current thinking in strategic planning mm -hmm. is that you want to get something that is basically a statement from the library board to our stakeholders, whether that's the average user or it's the, the board of supervisors or city councils or potential fundraisers, whoever it is, saying, here's who we are, here's what we want to do for the next five years, and you want it digestible. Mm -hmm. And in the detail, because, and here's the current. Um, the details, what's the staff? Here's the current five year plan, which is lovely, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, large. I mean, nobody this is a, a meeting format. This is basically like an elevator. You can get on the elevator. An elevator pitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good way to describe it. Um, so th that actually works better for my brain than the current one. Yeah. That's the way it's like that. <laughs> it was very difficult to, to get less words yeah. into what we're trying to say uh, for me personally. Well, just because we don't know what how what it means, really. Well, how it's going to be, how it's going to work. Yeah. And can you touch on, I know we're going to talk with this in the technology committee, but we've also had in the past, mm -hmm. there's been sort of this separate, there's been a technology plan that's been off cycle with the five-year plan yeah. because we wanted to uh, allow for more frequent updates. Yeah. Uh, what is the current, and, and was, was that approach in line with state guidance at the time? And has that changed? Uh, do you have anything to say? Um, I, know, I think we're going to talk about it. Technology. Yeah, I think at this point, staff is is looking for that technology committee meeting to decide like how we want to move forward on that yeah. end. Um, it, it was, not every library has a technology plan. Yeah. Uh, I, I continue to think it's it's a good idea to have some sort of plan. We, we it had been a goal of the five-year plan, like here's technology. You know, here's the things that we want to accomplish over the next five years. And we decided that that wasn't kind of agile enough. You know, we wanted to be more flexible. So we made two of them in each five-year plan. And still, it was three years and three years. Uh, so it, it remains to be seen how we're going to deal with that. Um, right now, some of it is in the parallel staff, right. uh, the, the other working doc that were there. But we could break that out and have the technology committee work on it. And we've also got a, a, a staff level technology advisory committee that can work on that as well. Okay, but so one thing I think I heard was there's not a state guidance to have a technology plan. I I let me double check on that before. Yeah. I don't think so, yeah. but I'm, I don't want to say that 100% yeah. without going back and, and checking with that. It seems just my hot take right now is probably this could or should or does encompass whatever we want to accomplish with technology at this level. And then the technology plan becomes a staff document yeah. similar to, or it's a subset of you know the, what you showed us. I think that's basically in line with what we're okay. thinking now, right. and I don't think that there's there's definitely there's a state requirement that we have a strategic plan. Yeah. Uh, in order to receive state aid, there's definitely no requirement that there is a technology. Yeah. And I'm almost one hundred percent sure there's definitely no requirement. Yeah. Okay. And then the only open question would be, in my mind, is there a separate document? Because essentially, we we had already in the technology committee moved a little bit in this direction with making a high level, more of the. You know, lots of text or bullet points, and this is a more graphic version. But is, is there one of these for technology specifically, or is it just rolled into this? And I, I probably don't. We'll talk about it. Yeah, I don't think there has been a plan to do that, but I think it's for the tech yeah. department's not here, but for the technology okay. committee to to figure out the best way to move this. All right. Well, I'm sure the floor is open about to Meredith for if anyone has opinions on what that would look like. 
this is this part part of the strategic plan. This is actually the strategic plan is this part yeah. right here. This is more informational about the library. So it was the recommendation is a one page handout. So we had a lot of discussion about what should be on the back side. Okay. And uh, I think Meredith what was the Meredith used the phrase that I liked. It was about, you know, I can't remember what it was, but it's something about like say who we are. Here's a here's why we're doing this. And that's it. So there's nothing here that is a, a goal or an objective or measurable. This is what's currently being offered. These are some examples of how we're addressing these. These literacies. I mean, you uh, just <laughs> you, you flip it over and you go, oh, there's the yellow line. Then you go for a blue line, and it's but it's different. You should do, you should do that, right? These these four different um, categories. And you think they're all I think on this that stage. this graphic is supposed to move that way. Right, so it's the other one is kind of vertical. But you see, like the I don't know if you look up on the colors, but the color coding. I mean, that's that's good feedback that we should take to Jennifer and our graphic designer worked on it. We should print this in black and white. There, there was a bit of a struggle because we have four colors. Then you have correspond. Then you have you can have this, and you only have two colors, and you're looking for. The brown and the blue. <laughs> right. I think we could talk about the colors in there. Certainly, that's the you know ultimately it seems foolish, but like this is the thing that we're going to give to the public to say here's who we are. So if the board has, I am myself not a graphic designer, but if the board has thoughts, then we will we will make it happen. You you would not believe, but we had quite a lot of discussion about whether Green County should be green. Oh, okay. uh, let's not open that barrel. <laughs> 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 Green County is currently orange. So in May we will see a, a document. I mean, you will see um, a, a complete document, including the staff piece. I'm not. I don't think it will be complete in May. Uh, we can share a much more fleshed out draft. Um, but this is the draft that the committee is proposing for the board to vote on. So the only changes that would be here would be if the board were to say we should add this or change that or strike that or scrap this or whatever it might be. So the, I think, um, Meredith, not to put words in your mouth, but I think what you were saying is that between now and May, the board should review this two-page document and, and, and send any feedback that you have so that if there are changes that need to be made, we can start to make them. Ideally, there's a vote in June because our current strategic plan is expiring in June. I mean, if it happened in July, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but um, ideally, it would be in June. Back on the agenda. All right. Um, Virginia Commission for the Arts grant acceptance. I signed something, and I guess that was it. That was actually state aid. <laughs> um, I am seeking a motion per our uh, policy and procedure when uh, staff apply for grants, the board needs to accept them basically to say that the organization can take this money and then spend it. Uh, staff have submitted and accepted um, two grants. This is actually the Virginia Commission for the Arts grants that um, Ann, you were interested in a while back. Uh, Jamrell has been awarded $1,500 for the Arts and Practice Grant. That's to host two teaching artists um, to lead eight-week music education programs at Nelson and Scottsville for children's pre-K to grade two. It's matched to standards of learning elements for uh, kids that, that are in school or uh, being homeschooled on those particular items. Jamrell has also been awarded $900 for the Virginia Touring Grant to increase opportunities for Virginians to experience high quality performing arts events and promote professional Virginia artists. Uh, and that fund would be used to book summer programs. And I believe there, um, I can answer any follow up questions there. And there's also a sample motion in your handouts if that's acceptable to the board. It's, uh, I'll do it. Okay. 
Oh, the JMRL accepts a Virginia Commission for the Arts grant, uh, granted allocations of up to $2,400 and authorized the expenditure of that funding to support children's programs. I was in favor. Aye. Close. Stains. Passes. All right, next up. Oh. I'm going to get my notes. <laughs> so in May, we're going to talk and do at the end of the selectors evaluation, which of course the personal matter is covered in closed session. We're not going to have a closed session today, but Mike had made a Comment um, and that uh, you would like to, for us to consider the paragraph to be added. Is that correct, Mike? From this? Well, I, as thinking about it, and I did send an email that everyone has had access to in the meantime. We have this contract, it has language, and we've used the same document for seven years in a row. And there's, it's kind of, I realized through a certain pathway of a Minor detail I can write attention. We we don't have a process in place for reviewing that language ever. Um, and in this case, some of our underlying uh, organization policies have changed, and there would be an opportunity if we had a way a process to review the language. There might be an opportunity to uh, update that to reflect our some of our organizational policies. So I think really I would frame it more as a big picture. Do we want to do that, and who would do it, and when? Um, but if we're going to be presenting the director with a contract to renew, that would be the natural time to have any updates uh, put into place. And some history here that when you were hired seven years ago? Um, yes, 2018, I began. Mm -hmm. uh, we obviously negotiated the contract with you at that time. Mm -hmm. I was not here. Um, so you can't blame me. Um, <laughs> but we negotiated the contract, which you accepted. Yes. And then going forward, each time the contract has come up for renewal, we have not renegotiated the contract other than to say, as we have with all staff, director is eligible for a blank percentage increase in salary. Okay. Um, which we've all agreed on, okay, in a closed session again, because it's a personal matter. Um, and then we've presented that to you. I'm just basically walking through this whole process here to say, is this okay? You know, um, and you have accepted. Correct. I can add two little bits of info there that might help to what Mike's thinking about. The first negotiation, the board made a motion to authorize the board president to negotiate a contract, and that was Peter McIntosh at the time. Um, and then at least once during those seven years, the board came out of closed session after my evaluation and the uh, motion was to extend my contract for three years. And then, so we were operating under the same language to Mike's point, but it was just extended for three years and I accepted and that moved on. So those have been the, the procedures that I've been involved in. So I'll devil's advocate my own idea here. We retained an excellent director for seven years, so maybe can of worms doesn't need to get opened up. And and the the tiny changes on that came to my attention that I sort of brought forward are a contingency and maybe the and the contingency is a very unlikely contingency that I mean on, on one level of doing things the right way, that's the point of legal uh processes is to cover contingencies. Uh, on the other hand, maybe it's unlikely, and if it really did happen, it's just the difference of we're paying an extra year of somebody who had to get fired for cause, where you know where we could have covered that contingency and save the save those dollars, but it's not going to break the system either way. So it's just. So I, I guess I guess what we're yeah. we're discussing here is do we want to amend the contract before or talk about amending the contract? Right. Yeah. Former, former committee looking into forming a task force to talk about amending the contract. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or do we want to proceed as we have done in right. the past, which is at some point to say contract's good. Right. We're gonna, I'm, I'm, yeah, sorry. I think it's but you're right to bring it back to that first question. So I'll 
with some printing thoughts on that. Who's nodding? I mean, I tend to think that um, I, I wouldn't open up that can of worms unless there was something that felt that it, you know, it kind of was was serious enough that, you know, that, that it's like we really want to go through this whole process. And, you know, so I feel like it's a good thing to bring up. And it, I mean, the other, right, the other pieces, I mean, these things, one way or another, these things will get looked at when there's a change in library directors, right? Like, so like that's that's kind of the forcing function of like, okay, we let's take a look at all this. Um, independent of that, I feel like I could see it being worth once a year, sort of, you know, before the renewal, just asking that question of like, is there anything? Has, it, has the world changed so much that there's something really important that we need to put in here. You know, I, think, I think we've sort of rolled that into the evaluation over the years. As we've done the director's evaluation, I think we've rolled in anything that you know was a red flag for anybody or, or something that needed improvement, that kind of thing. We've rolled that into the evaluation. That even mentioned thinking through it. But if I understand correctly, it, there's a difference between just saying um, we're renewing the contract right. versus like we're going to Negotiate. We're going to renegotiate. Going to renegotiate. Like even changing a word is effectively starting to renegotiate. Right. So I wouldn't do that unless there was something that we felt as a board was serious enough that it was worth opening. Yeah. It's hard to even have this without knowing what the contract says. I mean, you the can share that. It's probably available. It was in the email I sent. Mm -hmm. There was an attachment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I will say part of my what is shaping some of this is every year it is that we do the actual evaluation. I don't see anyone with the contract in front of them, and I don't have a sense that anyone has read it uh, recently. We're just saying we're happy and we're going to keep going. Well, let me just ask this one question. Does the contract say that the director has to comply with all state and local laws? Oh, well, it says you can terminate for cause. And you don't have to pay the salary if he's been uh, convicted of a criminal offense. So does so that the, does that accomplish what you said? I don't know. It's, it's only tied through the idea of a criminal offense. It's, I'm not looking at it either right now, but that's but I probably have read it more recently than you. It sounds like, and that's my <laughs> recollection. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, um, please. Yeah. I'm, why don't you all read the contract, <laughs> meet for the evaluation, or have some conversation beforehand and make a decision there whether or not you want to renegotiate. That is a two-way street if that happens. You know, yeah. um, I am I am happy with the current contract. It's worked fine for many years. I, I, it is an at-will contract. There's nothing in there that prevents this board from making any action on my job. Uh, yeah. On my job. But my only concern with that and the reason I brought it up two months in advance is if it got to well, this might be worth discussing, but we need to ask a lawyer, then we can't ask the lawyer in that meeting. It would be a sort of an, an there would be a lead time for that. So then we'd be in the position of saying, okay, Mr. Director, we we want to talk to a lawyer and we'll we'll get back to you in a couple months, you know, or a month. So are, you gonna, back. are you gonna be here next year? I don't know. I mean, I mean, is your contract up? I will be, um, I'm, my term expires in what did we just say june and i do intend to reapply but uh, up to the, it's up to the uh jurisdiction what happens well you'll probably be here um since we need to probably start this out in september yeah. you know and then we're prepared when your evaluation is when? next month next, next month. month and then yeah. by next month the attorney could look at it you could read it you know <laughs> well, the part is we even want to you know, have that get that review. Um, you know, what's the what's the level of motivation for that sort of review, whether it's in September or uh, or uh, March, which is when we first when I first kind of introduced this. Well, you um, you were right in introducing it if it was a concern that you had, and it's I think the board would go along with it. But this is sort of short to, as you say. If we need an attorney to look at something that we don't understand, 
then you're going to be off schedule. I will say that you know the contract is only five pages long. Actually, it's only four and a half. Um, and it's written fairly clearly. Um, so I mean, I don't, I'm, I can't see where legal counsel would really benefit us taking a review of it. Um, just in terms of this year, in terms of this year. But he's yeah. talk, Mike's talking about adding. Yeah, I know. I know. To but just, just to your question, Ann. It says that the board can terminate with three months written notice for any reason. Right. Um, and then the next one is where if there's criminal, then you can terminate immediately. So we're only talking about three months of well, salary on, hinging on that question. I don't think that's correct. Uh, that was my understanding. In terms of what I thought I was bringing up, there's a, there's a, and I don't, uh, should be <laughs> in front of me, which I don't, there's a for cause and a not for cause and an at will. And I think with at will, there's a one year salary payment requirement. No? If I may. Okay. Well, there's another, there's a point after that that says library director is entitled to severance pay. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think the severance is one year. Right. So, yeah. what, I, what I'd like to suggest here is that we all read the contract. Okay. And then in May, when we have a closed session, now before May, I'm going to be mailing out the director's evaluation, which we've done every year, and asking you all to fill that out and complete it and so forth. So as part of the closed session that we have in May, where we review the director's evaluation, let's also review, do we think the contract needs to be redone? Yeah. Um, again, I mean, Peter, you and I can read it, lots of people can, so... Um, I don't want to put anybody yeah. at a disadvantage here by not being able to actually look at it. Um, sure. Worst thing, that, worst thing that happens is, oh, wait, no, that's bad. We've got to get legal counsel involved. Okay. We push it back a month. Push what back a month? The evaluation. We have or the proposed, yeah, we, we would probably reach certain conclusions and then say, well, here's an open thing we want to. But, I would think that you could separate those two things yeah. and, and have an evaluation, which is based on the one that you have used yes. in the past. It's based right. on the state library right. criteria. Right. It's not tied into any sort of contractual obligation. It's just a straight up, here's what the state thinks the library director should be doing. Mm -hmm. I would think you could still perform an evaluation and then say to me, like, oh, hey, we want to do more. Yeah, it's just that the renewal has usually happened in, in hand in hand with that. Uh, and, and, and part of it, too, is the fiscal calendar. We want to make we yeah. want to make sure that you know, fiscal year changes, other staff are getting raised. Correct. So Tony, not to be too much of a stickler, but let me. I'd rather get to understand this ground, this particular ground rule in advance. Is if we're talking about wording of a contract, mm -hmm. it doesn't have anything to do with uh, performance mm -hmm. uh, or even compensation necessarily. Right. Is that a closed session personnel matter, or is that a structural? Uh, I, I tend to think it's not a closed session personnel matter. If I'm just saying, hey, there's a clause here that uh, in theory could be worded a different way. I don't think that's a closed session. That's a closed session. <laughs> that's it. You need to ask somebody. That's why it should be in September. Do this in September. Want, I'll come visit. <laughs> but um, I'm just thinking, I, I have a problem when we rush something, and I kind of feel rushed with it coming up, and I've got to do this too, and I've got to think. I don't like to be rushed. Okay, so yeah. per perhaps Kathy's suggestion is good that we do separate the two. And I think Mike, you were saying you were saying much the same thing, um, saying you know let's 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 make sure that do we need another closed session for that uh, if that's a contract negotiation. My personal opinion, again as a board member, not the board president, is that Kathy has a valid point that we're going to do the evaluation. We've always done the evaluation, and if we feel that the contract is missing a piece or needs to be revised. Obviously, we would revise that. And then we would come to David and say, we're about to revise this. Will you accept this? And David can say no. I mean, David can say no, right. I'm not going to do it. That's his part. Yeah, it's the timing. Um, 
I will say I think the current contract says that all that has to happen in December. So there are there are elements in that contract that are not valid. You know that if we were to do it again, we could clean them up. So let's if, if everybody's we have an agreement here. Let's proceed with the evaluation for the main meeting. Okay, because yeah. that's based on this past. Yeah. Yes, right. based on that right. proposal of the past year, and and let's consider having yet yeah, you know a either I, I could that be offline i mean that doesn't happen well let me toss out a friendly amendment it could possibly be the personnel committee mm -hmm. also just uh takes up the question of does this should we discuss yeah, we, we, review the whole contract yeah. the personnel committee has never dealt with the director before is it is not my experience no we haven't no I yeah don't. i'm just uh, and i'm not trying to volunteer others yeah. to do this particular thing i'm just i'm just trying to brainstorm about where if it sounds like there there's a, here's what I'm hearing I think uh there's some interest in conceptually uh considering the question of what or whether any tweaks are are you know could be made to the contract I'm hearing uh that timing wise that's not something that it, there's a lot of appetite to try and make that happen by a month from now um so then it's just if there's somebody who's going to consider this question now, how does that get done? Is it a if you're saying offline emails, I don't know. It's a, but if it's a committee, then it's then it's then it's more of a uh there's a structure in place perhaps for that. You can make an ad hoc working group, a kind of director's, you know, conversation committee. And I, I don't, and I just want to make sure that what we're talking about is that the first the, the first step is to have the conversation of whether or not there are, you know, suggested changes that are serious enough that the board wants to go down this path because, you know, um, renegotiating contracts is, is a time consuming and risky process. So, but at the same time, every year we're, we, it is a renegotiation. We're saying, Hey, Mr. Director, We'd like to re up for another year. And he, at that moment, he can say yes or no, as we've just identified. And that a negotiation could ensue. Uh, a negotiation could break out at any, at any moment. Yeah, but as soon as you as soon as you sort of change the terms to benefit the library, yeah, and the yeah, person you're yeah. negotiating with has the right yeah, to sort right. of try to benefit, right. change the terms to benefit them. Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't know what where we are with this. I think I think where we are with this is we're going to send out I'm going to send out the evaluation. We're going to do the regular evaluation in May, in closed session if we want to do. Um, and I think we're going to have some form of discussion about whether or not we want to revise the contract. Okay. And if we do indeed want to revise the contract, how would we revise the contract? And that is a separate item, whether that's a separate group that does that. Whether we do that in a closed session, I'm going to table that piece. And I think the people will allow me to do that. But when will that get decided? Well, we can we can talk about when you want to see that piece on the agenda. Okay. The new piece. The new piece, right? Right. I would put in a vote that a contract discussion is definitely covered by closed meeting protocols. You know, because you can't separate, you can't say we're going to have the contract is with me. It's not this, it's not a policy that's with the world. It's a negotiation between me and the library board. So to me, anything that's involved in that negotiation is, is subject to, yeah. is subject to a personal matter that can be under close, close session. Certainly I, we I don't object to that. I just want to get the answer correct. You know, I about it. guarantee you that's what a lawyer would say. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. It makes sense. Well, then we shouldn't be talking about any of this right now. <laughs> We're going to figure out when we're going to talk about it. Uh, all right. So, is a motion going to be made, or are you just going to say September? You're going to look at it. And I'm, not even, I'm not even picking September, Kathy. I've been well, like, it, 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 later, later. Later, but not May. Right. <laughs> all right. I think that does leave. So, the version of the uh, evaluation that's in your handouts is the same one that has been used, it's been adapted from the uh, state library so there there was it was put in there to give you all a chance to review it and make sure that looks like a a good tool so we'll do the, we'll do what we did with the, the staff evaluation i will send you a copy of this again 
Um, and I will say, are there any comments or suggestions, things you need to, you would like to revise in the evaluation? If so, get them to me before, and I will set a date. Question. I don't know whether it's a question or a statement. He just made a valid point that the one that we have came from the state. Right. And apparently that's the one that they are, the big committee they have worked on. Right. Maybe get a copy of the one that they're using at the state level now, and we can look to compare for the meeting that's going to happen not in May. Does that make, make sense? Because they have done research, I'm sure. They didn't just come up and with some ideas, but to see if that has changed. And if it hasn't changed, you know, then your conversation may be a little bit different. Are you talking about the evaluation or a contract? Uh, the conversation about whether you even need to bring it up. He said, don't say September. But what when whether you need to bring up a new revised one. Which one, the contract or the evaluation? The evaluation, the one that this that it came from the State Department. So has the state changed it? In I don't book? believe so. This okay. Is, this is That's what I'm... The current trustee handbook. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's in the... I mean, we all have this handbook, so it's in here. It's in on page yeah. fifty-three. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, but it, but it's just we've cop we've copied it out of there. Yeah. Time. But and it hasn't changed. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know the, the, the most recent. The, the most the, recent handbook we have that has. Yeah, the handbook changed. hasn't changed. I guess the question could be: Is the is the state done? You know, something that they haven't published yet in handbook form? Like, I don't. Imagine the answer to I don't. I think it all, you know, if, if they were to update it, it would be in the revised. Well, Brandy's got the newest version of that book. Oh, wait, the, newest, the newest one? There's a newer one? What, what year is on here? I got the what white one. There's, a, there's the gray one and the white one. That's what I, think I call 2019 it. is the yeah. version. Yeah, I think it is too. But nothing has changed since 2019. I just wanted to point out that, that number 17 um, asks if we want to accomplish anything in 2019. <laughs> I mentioned the time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Which number? Number seven, page seven, page page twelve. Would you stop reading the thing? Yeah, and that's supposed to be a closed session. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Well, why leave? Um, now that we've given him a hard time, let's hear from the library's director. Library director. Okay. Um, walk out <laughs> speaking of um, personnel issues, uh, if you recall, the board voted um, late last year for funding for a project to revise staff job descriptions. We have gotten the updated versions of those. They are out to the staff for feedback now. Uh, by the end of this month, I'll bring those back to the Berkeley Group, which is the organization working with the city of Charlottesville to update their job descriptions. So we should, by the end of the fiscal year, have all new updated job descriptions, which is a huge step on all of our comp work moving forward. So I'm very pleased with that um, progress. Uh, the library is sending two teams to wordplay this Thursday night at the Paramount. The Friends of the Library are sponsoring two teams of staff competing in a trivia event to support literacy volunteers in the area. So if anybody's interested in a fun night that Jan Morrell is going to be um, participating in, it's Thursday night at uh, 425 at the Paramount. And we've done really well in the past, right? We have. Um, so these two groups are competing against each other. Yes. And many other teams. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Doggy dog world. <laughs> Uh, JMR received grant-funded Eclipse classes to distribute a few weeks ago, uh, swamped with interest. Over 2,500 were handed out. The grant specified they weren't to just be handed out. It had to be part of a program, so people who wanted their glasses had to attend a library program or uh, do a make-and-take craft in some uh, some instances. So I witnessed a lot of grown people cutting crafts <laughs> in the on the day of the Eclipse, and the feedback was marvelous. They said it was brought them back to their childhood. So, um, two big programs upcoming. One, uh, Poem in Your Pocket Day, is next Monday, the 29th, this to help JMRL celebrate National Poetry Month. So, at all branches, there'll be a free poem to give out to everybody, including some local businesses. And May 4th is the How To Festival at the Central Library, as well as Free Comic Book Day Regional. 
Big news, this should have been an announcement probably, that the Friends wrapped up a record-breaking book sale this month um, with over $165,000 raised to support the library. They had their biggest Friday night members night ever by my count, almost $13,000 raised just in that two-hour members preview sale. Uh, so it's just a good reminder of the benefits you get from joining the Friends of the Library as well. If anybody's membership is not current, check with the JMRL uh, Friends. And finally, uh, just uh, budget news was not a separate line item this time, so we're starting to get to the end of budget season. But just as an update, the city of Charlottesville has passed their 25 budget, which includes full funding. That's the only one of our five jurisdictions which has set their budget for next year. Uh, Louisa will be voting on theirs next Monday, uh, the 29th. Their current budget includes full funding for JMRL, their current recommendation. Albemarle, May 1st, also including full funding. Green May 14th, also including full funding, and Nelson on July 11th, uh, I'm sorry, June 11th, also currently recommending full funding. So if all things go chalk, if they all vote the way that they are looking at them now to um, rule out full funding, which you're getting That's all I have to report. Great. Thank you. Other matters? Can't imagine there isn't anything you want to talk about. <laughs> Uh, see, you know, uh, Tony, you, you need to put together a nominating committee. Thank uh, you. For our officers yes. for next year. Yeah. Uh, board elections are coming up. Um, we generally do that in July. Uh, you'll need to have somebody in place for July. So I can't remember. Off the top of my head, I can't remember if it's a vote in June or a vote in July. Anyway, uh, we need at least two people to serve on a nominating committee. Um, in order to propose candidates for board offices. And there really are two board offices. There's a chair and vice chair. So, um, and, and this this is not an onerous task. It involves it getting people to say, I guess I'd like to do that. Or if nobody says, yes, I'd like to do that, knocking on somebody's door and saying, would you like to do this? Um, so we can have two folks from the nominating committee. ASAP, basically. I, I don't think they have to meet in person. They don't meet right. right. call, the email, things like that. Even that makes sure they don't meet. Oh, no, I, I was going to nominate somebody. <laughs> I nominate Brandy. Okay. For what? <laughs> nominating committee. <laughs> and all you have to do is give it give us names. Right. Okay, now who wants to serve with Brandy? <laughs> Brandy, having been voluntold, she's working. <laughs> I, I nominate Anne. <laughs> Are you leaving soon or something? <laughs> she's like, I don't want to say it next year. <laughs> The nominating committee has been formed and will be Brandy. And, and this is for the two offices? This is for the two offices, yes, right. And for next year. Right. For next year. Yep. And may I interject something? You can ask the same people that are still in the position, so you just ask. As long as you hold the phone way out from your ear when you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being directed. Okay. Any other matters there? Mr. Gregor? Okay, that was a good one. All right, uh, future agenda items for our May meeting, which will be held in Crozet. Crozet Ring? Reminder, it's a week early because of Memorial Day. Thank you, Ray. So May um, 20th, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will obviously have a closed session for the director's evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, We'll have a second reading of the community partnerships after the revision. Um, Would that be a second if, if we're revising? I think, we, I mean, I, I was, my opinion it was always the first reading, if it had revisions in it, then you had the second reading. But we can always choose to go beyond, you know, we could say, wait a minute, we're not done with this yet, and, and push it back a month if we want to do that. Is that, is that my, Reading too much okay. into that, Mike? To me, I think we always do two readings just for a public notice kind of yeah. function um, yeah. for everybody. I, I think it's 
you wouldn't want to practice where you're reading something and bring it to a vote and then somebody a month later says, wait, I didn't know that, you know, and it didn't get the chance to weigh in. So that we're erring on the side of caution with that. Do we need to do it twice or three times? In my thinking would go to what, how um, substantive were these changes? Okay. So if we just changed kind of one little phrase and added a word mm -hmm. from something we've already read, probably doesn't need a, a third time. I think, I think fair notice has been given to everyone that we're talking about this generally, which I, that's just my thought process. And Meredith, I assume we'll have another five year plan committee report update thing with more substantive pieces. I, I don't think there'll be a committee update. I don't think the committee is planning to meet. I think it'll just be the board will have a discussion, you know, chance to weigh in after having some time to sit with the current draft. Other agenda items. There's a budget committee meeting already scheduled uh, for May 6th. So that should mean that there should be a draft of the equipment budget for fiscal year 25 for the board to review. It doesn't have to be voted on until June. So we'll give them a month to, to review that. And a reminder that uh, we're entertaining new ideas for trustee continuing education for May and of course for June. Um, have some. Um, so we, you know, if you have any other ideas about that, that segment, happy to entertain those. I can also bring the fiscal year 25 board schedule to you all, which would include the dates and the, the you know, we're going to be rotating two different branches on uh, for visits as well. All right. Motion to adjourn. Well, I guess we're stuck here. Motion <laughs> to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Now remember, we have an uh, optional floor. We don't need more library. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you.